joining us tonight. God is so good and so faithful. It is another awesome session of Teaching Tuesday tonight. We are back with our bishop, praise the Lord, leading us tonight. And we do ask that, as always, you share the link. You invite a friend. The more, the merrier. Amen? Amen. Let us go together to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, you are so mighty. We thank you for your power over and in our lives. We thank you for the strength that you've given us, God. We thank you that we can find encouragement in your word, God, that we might be able to fight the discouragement of the enemy. God, we thank you that you've kept us all throughout this day, oh God, let alone all the days before. God, you've just been so faithful. Even when we are not to you, you remain the same. And so God, we say thank you tonight. We are available to you. Our hearts and our minds are open to hearing from you tonight and receiving what you have for us, oh God. Thank you for our bishop, God, your messenger, God, your vessel. God, we're asking that you would strengthen him, touch his mind right now, God. Intercede in the areas that he might feel weak physically, God. But we know that in you there is all power and that his spirit man is mighty because of you, oh God. And so we thank you for your word tonight. We're going to receive, give him clarity of speech, oh God. In all things, we will say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are um, in Acts tonight, Acts chapter 16. And we had such a mighty teaching session a couple of weeks ago about sin. And so tonight we are going to be going further into how we can be better equipped to fight against that sin. Amen. So Acts chapter 16, starting at verse 19, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Amen. 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 Sin. So what did that say to you when you read spoke to you? It's uh it said to me it's very real. God wants us to know that it is real, but we also have the power to fight against it. That is true. Amen. The power of Jesus and the blood. Amen. And we are preaching uh, holy week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Now, I'm essentially gathered last week, celebrated a great uh, victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Of celebration. Yes. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our. Uh, all of our partners. Woo 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 Amen. Now um, you said sin, and mm -hmm. that led to some harsh treatment of the apostles. That's right. And how they were treated and sent around greed. That's right. So read that 
When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. It's interesting that greed and wealth, the power of money and greed, surfaces here. Mm -hmm. And money and greed cause an outcry and opposition yeah. against the gospel. Amen. It's amazing what the devil uses Amen. to fight against the gospel. It's worth noting because the owners of this young lady had lost their top money maker. Mm -hmm. And they were using her uh, to exploit her. And she had been delivered by the power of Christ. And that tells me that not, that not everyone is excited. Uh, others being delivered mm. from their sins, mm. uh, the strongholds of Satan being delivered. That's right. Not everybody shouted with you. Not yeah. everybody rejoices with you. That's right. But they were upset. Upset. Amen. Amen. That she had been, they were frustrated. They were angry. Mm. They were full of wrath and vengeance. And so, what did they do? They caught Paul in Silas. And they dragged them. Drag the scripture them. say that speaks of violence. Yes. They were toward them. Amen. And they dragged them before the magistrates, who were the the officials. Amen. In the right. courts. Amen. Amen. Uh, the governors and the rulers uh, to charge them falsely. Amen. Because of proclaiming the gospel. Amen. Money and greed. Money and greed. Partnered together to bring false charges. Mm. The preachers were said to be dangerous. Mm. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Mm. Can you imagine saints that they were considered to be dangerous? They, they were troubling the people. How mm. the hell are they troubling the people? How are they troubling the preachers? What were they doing to trouble the people? Bringing truth. Bringing truth. That's it. You said bring the truth. You just had some truth there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were bringing truth. Mm -hmm. And so you're telling me, all uh, right, that uh, if you're bringing truth, you, you're troubling people. Yes. How so? Uh, the truth sheds light on darkness. And a lot of sinful things are done in darkness. Wow, and they're. Wow, wow things that people are ashamed of. And a lot of things don't really want people to know about. And so when you're shedding light on those things, you're, my generation calls it like shaking up the room. Um, you are, yeah. <laughs> shaking up the room. You're, like me. Up the uh, you're causing things to be unsettled. You are um, messing up the, their status quo. You are um, making them see something that um, threatens who they're portraying themselves to be. Or generation will call, will call that a cataclysmic. Uh, shaking or shifting. Oh, so y'all use y'all dictionaries. Terms <laughs> 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 of, uh, of uh, some theological latter day stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, uh, it's so wicked in this age in which we live it. Uh, I heard a a uh, editor say today that if certain things line up the way it's lining up, uh, and and certain things happen, and I don't want to say it all in this setting, then we are heading for a cataclysmic uh, um, chaotic situation. Uh, a biblical proportion uh, that you will see uh, out of the book of Revelation.
And it caught my attention because here is an editor of a paper saying that. And I said, and I said to myself, what are the preachers proclaiming? It's a wicked age in which we're living. And I'm back to what you said. Somebody need to be talking about truth. Amen. Shaking up, what you say, shaking? Shaking up the room. Shaking the room. I'm going to use that term. Shaking up the room. Shaking up the room. And so they were uh, disturbing as, as they were charged. They were troubling the people, disturbing the public peace. So the public, according to them, was uh, were happy being the way they were. They were ignorant. What's that word you just said? They were ignorant. They thought they were. Oh happy wow! You 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 awesome. <laughs> Those words you're using to be teaching different customs and carrying on uh, illegal religious activity. That's what they were trying to get them on. Why? Because the strict Roman law allowed conquered nations to continue their religious practice, but did not allow foreign religions to evangelize among the Roman citizens. And Paul and Silas was evangelizing, winning others to follow after uh, Jesus of Nazareth. The same charges are often brought against Christian believers around the world today. Yeah, that's right. That makes preaching of the gospel dangerous in some places. That's right. That's right. You ought to say amen now. Amen. amen. Now, note the emphasis, uh, uh, you read it here, uh, verse 20, verse 20, read verse 20 here. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews. These men. Park down these men. These men, what? Being Jews. This is a slur of racial, racial prejudice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Racial. Yeah. You, you had it then, you hear it a lot now. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, um, it, was, it was a put down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how racial uh, issues are still prevalent. Even today. Amen. 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 Here it is right here. Here it is right here. Now money and greed. Cause corruption. Of the public officials. Amen. Mm. Yes Lord. That's right. Amen. Paul and Silas was not allowed. To answer for themselves. And they were not even allowed to speak. Amen. Amen. Uh, an open and thinking mind would have seen the enormous contribution uh, the preachers could have made, uh, but not allowed to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. We're in an age now, I'm going to go down a path here. We're in an age now of banning books. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Not allowed to think for yourself. Right. Same path. A turning back, mm -hmm. rejecting knowledge. Yes. Yes, that's not freedom. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse, 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 read verse 21. Read verse 21. There are some parallels here. And throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans. It's not unlawful for us. It's it's not for us. Mm, right. We don't need to learn this. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. It messes us up. Yes. Yeah. It disturbs us. Yes. Go on. Us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Now, all Paul and Silas was doing was trying to uh, help to deliver people from sin, deliver them from hopelessness, get them out of their own darkness. Yeah. They were trying to help to strengthen society 
through righteousness and justice, they were trying to guide people to harness their own energies, amen, in creativity and development and focusing upon morality, amen, and moral issues rather than essential pleasure. Somebody say amen. amen. But the officials of that day uh, was closed-minded and were not open-minded. Somebody say amen. amen. And so they said they teach customs which are not lawful for us. Ban what they're teaching. Shun their teaching. Same thing that we're hearing today across this land. Comments. You're absolutely right. It's the same, same thing uh, that we are seeing today, and this lesson is on time. Yeah, we ought to make the lesson uh, live in the area in which we live in. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing about the biblical text, we have to uh, uh, put legs on it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I say that all the time. You have to see it in the context in which it's written, but also see it uh, as a document that lives. Yeah. It's not static. Right. It's yeah. active. It moves. It reveals itself. Amen. It's a revelation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so the more you get into it, the more it reveals itself to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see yourself in it, yes. uh, in the activities of day-to-day -day activities. Amen. That's what I'm trying to see. Amen. And it speaks to you of life situations. Yes. That's the reason why we study God's Word. Yes, yes it is. Amen. Amen. Now, back to money and greed. Mm -hmm. Money and greed. Called shameful, unjust, and evil treatment of Paul and Silas. Servants of God. And so they tore their clothes off of them, beat them with rods, the Bible said many times, cast them into prison, a dark, dirty, red roach infested dungeon, thrown into the inner cell, a solitary confinement uh, type of situation, had the feet locked in chains. The point is that these two godless servants were treated this way because of some men who were consumed with dark spirits yeah. Yeah. of money and greed. And you can be consumed with dark spirits of money and greed. Amen. Such a dark, evil spirit has great power. Yes. But, God but God has greater power. Power. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Turn to First Epistle of John, chapter four, verse four. Real quick. First Epistle of John, chapter four, verse four, and then hold your place in 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 the text we're studying today. But God is greater. God is greater. Amen. Amen. You have it. Yes. She knows the Bible. The preacher ought to know where to find it in the Bible. Amen. First John 4, 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. She knows the Bible. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I was I was preaching a revival years ago. It's a true story. I was preaching revival years ago uh, in a, in a real a great church, and and I I uh, took my text. I said I'm preaching tonight from Genesis chapter one verse one, hmm. and uh, turn with me if you don't mind Genesis chapter one verse one, and I'm waiting for you to turn. And in front of me were some officers of the church. And they were flipping and flipping and flipping, trying to find Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Stood down and waited, and I finally said, uh, 
My brothers, that's the first book of the Bible. And I couldn't understand it because the particular uh, brother that couldn't find it was a president of a university. But a digging in the church. Full of Holy Ghost and wisdom. You ought to know your Bible. Amen. And if you can't find Genesis 1 and 1, my God, wait, my God. that's a problem. I, I, that was a commercial. I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked when I, I I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I got sidetracked when I saw how fast Reverend Rachel found that text. She knows her Bible. You ought to know your weapon. And how to use it. Anyway, let me get back. Let me get back to my Now, the, the greater tragedy of so many in the world is that they put selfishness, greed, and money before people. It's because of selfishness. So many uh, influential people attack genuine believers. But Christ changes lives. He changes lives. He changes the immoral to the moral. He changes the unjust to the just. He changes the dishonest to the honest. He changes the prideful to the humble, the powerful to the servant, the wealthy to the benevolent, the authoritarian to the helpful. He changes lives. Whenever you meet Christ, you are changed if you show enough meet Jesus Christ. A change would take place. Amen. Now, much of what uh, what happens, Amen, uh, to us uh, come about because of a change that takes place. Amen. 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 Now, a shift happens here in the text when it gets down to the next section. Yes. Notice all that happened to them: the greed, the beating, the flogging. The accusations, it did not change their message. It did not change their direction of travel. They stayed on target. They stayed on course. They ended up in prison. Yes, that's right. But it didn't stop the message. It did not stop their purpose. Verse 25. All right. About midnight, Paul and Silas were... Verse 20. Verse, no, verse, start at verse 22. 23, 23. Verse 23. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown in. They were severely prison. beaten. Yes. Oh, severely, severely. Amen. Go. They were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Mm -hmm. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Mm hmm. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, suddenly, there was such say a, suddenly. suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, mm -hmm. and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword mm -hmm. and was about to kill himself mm -hmm. because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Read on. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. Read on. We are all here. Mm -hmm. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and you will be saved, mm -hmm. you and your household. Then they, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Mm -hmm. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. Wow. Wow. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. A meal. He was filled with joy. Yeah. Because he had come to believe in God. Mm -hmm. He and his whole household. Mm -hmm. When it was daylight, the magistrates. 
apologize. When it was daylight, the magistrates want to get rid of us quietly. You're doing all right. Sorry. Want to get rid of us quietly. No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. Yes. The officers reported to the magistrates. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house. Lydia's house. Lydia surfaces again. Yeah. Yeah. Where they were met with brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Encouraged them. Then they left. Now, notice here, they were beaten severely, yeah. thrown in prison, not walked in, thrown in prison, yeah. amen, but they got happy singing and praising and praying to God. Yeah, amen. Mm. Prison mm. served the purpose. Yeah. My God. It was about a jailer and salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. Five things happen in what uh, Reverend just read. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, this is a great study of the subject of salvation. If you want to know about salvation, study this section. Amen. Okay. Number one, the preparation for salvation. Preparation. Read this later. 25 through to verse 28. Amen. Amen. And then uh, verse 29, 30, the cry for salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, the proclamation of salvation. Mm -hmm. Verse 31 and 33. Mm -hmm. Number four, the fruits of salvation. Amen. Verse 34. And number five, the effects of salvation. Yes. Amen. Upon the world. If you've been saved, it ought to affect the whole world. The world. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 35 through 40. Salvation. That was a strong witness of the disciples through terrible difficulties. Don't let your difficulties not bear a witness. That's right. I think I'll stop right there. And I'll pick up that next week. Amen. Come on, add something to this. Amen. Uh, that was very rich and another cliffhanger, as always. Um, salvation should affect the world um, in one way or another. Some people say like, oh, um, for example, your parents hadn't gone more than 50 miles out of their town of Virginia. Exactly. But. Not even a town. Yeah. Not even a town. Yeah. Um, but their salvation was so powerful that it uh, ignited and affected your salvation, which your salvation ignited and affected people across the world. That's a good way of saying it. So just to put it in practical terms, that you yourself might say, well, I don't know the world or I don't have the ability to travel the world physically, but you don't know who's watching you, That's right. who might yeah. have the capacity given by yeah. God to go here, there, and other places yeah. with something that you inspired. And so we have to realize that none of our salvations is just for us. That's right. It is all about the world. And it is up to God how he makes that happen. We just be worried about making sure that we are ready and always growing ourselves in salvation so that we're able to fulfill that. Pastor, Pastor Carrie Pona, I think, captured it well when he said that, uh, that when, when we go, to these places mm -hmm. around the world yeah. with the gospel. He say he's also going right. Amen. through us. Amen. Yeah. 
that's what I see in what you just said. Amen. Now, let's close with this uh, thought. They did not, Paul and Silas did not let their difficulties affect their positive witness upon others. How do you see that? Because of their true salvation. They didn't they didn't wallow it in the pain. They didn't wallow it in in the difficult situation. They didn't wallow in the fact that I'm in prison. What did I do? They didn't wallow it in it. They knew that God was going to bring something out of it. Yes. That was purpose. And that was a divine purpose of it. Yes. Okay, go ahead. They knew that they had the ultimate Savior. So, yes, the situation now is difficult. Yes, it is trying. Yes, it is frustrating. Yes, it is heavy. But I believe in the greater power. This sin has a little bit of power, but I believe in the one that has the ultimate power. So this situation, this jail, this prison is something very small to the great God that I serve, that Paul and Silas serve. And so we have to keep that in mind in this time where as you mentioned so many things that correlate that we see now that were first in the scriptures in the scriptures, in the whole Bible, are things that we see today. We have to keep in mind the attitude of Paul and Silas in that prison. Sing hymns, pray. Amen. Uh, 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 let's, let's do one other thing here. Shout out one question. Just shout it out loud. One question. I see one question in your eyes. Come on. Shout it out. Come on. Shout it out loud. How do you stay focused? Paul and Silas were they're very focused on staying in the right mind and right attitude and right spirit. They have been severely beaten, thrown in the prison, and they were singing and praying and were singing hymns and praising God. So much so that the jail all the jailers heard there was joy it had to be joy in that situation so so how do we stay focused and find joy in difficult situations there's a uh uh text in romans um um what's that text in romans um Well, that's one of them. Go ahead and read it. Read it. Good. That's one of them, but there's another two. I, I rejoice in tribulation. tribulation. Yeah, persecution. Sorrow. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, devil. I rejoice. I rejoice. Come on, you know it. You're you already saying it. I rejoice in uh, tribulation. I rejoice in persecution. Uh -huh. All that, but. Uh, uh, I think the biggest thing how how uh, Paul did it, uh, he had a strong prayer life, and and he he would use words. If you read the Corinthians, uh, and you read, you read particular uh, Philippians, he talks about the things he thought on. Think on these things, uh, and he filled his mind with things that uh, positive things. Uh, he talks about rejoice in the Lord always, uh, in everything, give thanks, and those kind of things. And everything means everything, and all means all. All right, all right. And, and he did that. Uh, and then uh, there's another one. You have it. Uh, there's a couple in Romans, uh, Romans 5, 3, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, 
because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame, but God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit who has been given to us. Mm -hmm. 12. Another uh, is Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And, and noted in Romans, you are delivered by the word of your testimony. Yes. So it's so it's 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 amount of words you put in you, uh, the number, uh, and I think the more words you put in you is how you stay focused. Yes. I'm summing it up. Yes. Amen. Another. Go ahead. One last good one's in and also in Romans eight. 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yeah. And all, and all of those really speaks to really picking yourself up off the floor. Just right. putting in plain, simple language. Picking yourself up off the floor and looking ahead and going on. That's right. uh, we, are, we are perplexed, but what? We're cast down, but not destroyed. All of those. Uh, speaks in terms of getting up, going forward, picking ourselves up. Uh, we, we, we're bending, but we're not broken uh, and all of that. And Paul uses those language, language like that over and over and over. And so you're talking about a, a person who, who knows pain. Uh, and he talks about it in in 12th chapter, I uh, have about the infirmities and the weaknesses, but uh, his grace is sufficient. Is sufficient. Yeah. So it's, it's those kinds of things. And he's letting us know, it, and I'm putting this straight language again. If I can do it, you can do it. But the focus is in prayer, it's in praise, it's in God's word. We 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 stumble, fall, but when we lose sight of the word, and our prayer life suffers, or we draw back out of the fellowship, that's when the devil beat up on us. Amen. Amen. I think I set it down at that. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much for joining us again tonight for another powerful, dynamic riveting relevant Amen. session yes. of teaching tuesday we thank our leader our pastor our bishop for providing us with practical examples in the bible of how we can face the enemy conquer over the enemy to be able to remain steadfast in this christian walk and so we continue to pray for you our partners friends those who view, we want to encourage you tonight. If you are a virtual member of International Community Baptist Church, churches, amen, all of our churches do uh, participate in not only telling God we love him, but showing him. One way that you can do that is by sowing into the house of God, sowing into missions. We do this all year round 365 days we are a missions church all of god's churches are supposed to be mission churches here we take that very very seriously and so we pray that if it's on your heart tonight that you would sow carol a baltimore ministries.org amen if you would like to sow into missions or if you see yourself as a virtual member and would like to sow into the church we pray that you would do so in obedience to god amen we continue to pray for you, and God bless you. We will see you next week. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Continue to pray for our uh, churches all over the world. Amen.